Hey all, my name is Paul Broski and I am the owner of Quality Business Plan. And what I'd like to do today is to give you all some tips and tricks on how to write a clothing line business plan, as well as to show you all how to use a basic uh, financial model that I've customized that may be used in the clothing line uh, business plan, as well as this model that I show you all how to create and how to use it can be expanded upon for usage for your basic profit and loss statement as well as your pro forma financial projections for your five years as well as balance sheet. All right, so with that said, the way the structure of this little video I've got concocted here, the way it's gonna work is I'm gonna give you a little bit of background about me, who I am, why I do what I do, and then from there, we'll dive into some tips and tricks on how to write your company information section of your clothing line business plan. And then we'll talk about that financial model that I was alluding to just a few minutes ago. All right. With that said, let's launch this game. All right. So first and foremost, a little bit about me. Then we're going to talk about you and your needs for your clothing line business plan. I am a professional writer, specifically a business plan writer. So if you all want to avoid all the trials and tribulations and the wonderful growth opportunities involved with writing your own business plan, uh, please pick up the phone, give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. I'd be absolutely delighted to help you with the business plan. Also, if you've already got your business plan like 95% there and your financial projections just need a little bit of tweaking, then one of my business plan books or one of my financial projections books might be the, the missing link to help you um, push your business plan or help you complete your business plan or financial projections. And with that said, um, if you're looking for a business plan book, check me out on Amazon.com. And then finally, education. I am an adjunct professor and subject matter expert for both business and finance. So if you need a little bit of help with your financial projections, your business plan is all scored away. Again, give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. All right, infomercial is done. Let's talk about your clothing line, your clothing line business plan. So for the most part, tip number one, company description. There's a lot of ground you have to cover in your company description. And with the clothing line, there is so many wonderful twists and turns and differentiating opportunities that you can use to set, not only set yourself apart from your area competitors, but also from those big name brands as well. All right, so with that said, Tip number one, when you write your company description, what's the motivation? What is your motivation behind starting this business? I mean, do you have a love of clothing? Uh, do you have a knack for designing? You know, what, what is it? Do you, do you like to sew? I mean, is this something that you, you want to do? Are you very creative? You have like a lot of original designs that people absolutely love. Uh, whatever your story is, the clothing line business, it, the, the clothing line industry, it, it's not just about the clothing, but it's also about the backstory too. So when you're writing your business plan, make sure to lead it off. You know, lead off batter is going to be your it's going to be your story. And don't make it a novel. Don't make it a you know a seven to ten page you know dissertation of your life from you know infancy until you know graduating college and and so on. You know, keep it short, keep it sweet, keep it to the point. You know, about one one paragraph is usually enough to to get across your story. If it's not then you know maybe we need to or maybe you need to you know really start you know just you know tighten it up a little bit but yeah don't go don't go past a paragraph keep it short keep it sweet keep it to the point uh, but you know lead it off with you know showing your passion for the company next for your company description is your specialty from my experience in working with designer clothing line individuals and people that are launching their clothing lines online or in retail shops or you know already launching a retail shop and now going online or vice versa whatever it is almost always what i find is that a company is, they have a specialty the specialty might be shirts it might be pants, it might be blouses, it might be dresses, it might be sundresses, or it might be matching outfits with pants and shirts and, and accessories. Whatever your specialty is, whatever you're going to use as that cornerstone to separate you from, you know, the person down the street or the next, you know, the next website, make sure to highlight that early on in your company description and make sure to set yourself apart using that specialty and then use the other products to, to support that specialty. An example of this would be if your specialty is shirts, then, you know, talk about your shirts and, you know, state, you know, maybe your main revenue driver are your shirts and your logos, you know, on your shirts and then people really like it and you've got different colors. And then maybe talk about your, um, make, talk about your pants and maybe talk about your jeans and, and everything else. But if your specialty is shirts, then drill, drill on that early, drill on it hard and make sure the reader really understands that th this is your bread and butter. This is, this is what you're building your empire upon. 
All right. And then finally, when you're writing your business plan, make sure to include some industry statistics in there. You know, for example, I did a little bit of research on women clothing line recently, and I found that, you know, total in total revenues in the U.S. are about thirty point seven billion dollars and that the growth estimates for this for this niche clothing line is about negative point three percent. But keep in mind. What I have also found is there's a lot of growth for small retailers for the clothing lines. So those big department stores, they're, they're pulling back, they're falling to the wayside, and that is pulling the industry down as a whole. But from my opinion and my experiences, I'm seeing a lot of small a, a lot of small companies really eating up that market share you know, for the clothing line, whether it be the designer clothing line or retail clothing line or wholesale, what have you. There's a lot of new players in there. It's just those department stores, you know, those, those big block department stores, they're suffering right now because you know, people just, they're, they're not going for that. They're, they're, they're going towards the small businesses. So yes, the, the revenues are growing, going down a little bit, but there's some underlying reasons for that and it's not because small businesses it's more because the large businesses are suffering because of the small businesses which is a good thing for a small business all right so when you're including statistics in your business plan there's a few different benefits you're going to get from that uh, first and foremost when you include business uh, statistics in your business plan your reader is going to when the reader reads your business plan they're going to say you know what hey look this statistic is right and this statistic is a fact and, and this part right here is a fact as they see more and more factual information in your business plan, they're going to get the perception that the document as a whole in its entirety is factual. And this is important because when you get to the financial projections, we're in the fantasy land here. We're guessing our, our numbers. You know, I don't care how long you've been in business and, and how experienced you are. I don't know what I'm going to have for dinner tonight. And I've been eating dinner for the last 47 years. You know, and I can't tell you, I've been doing business plans for the last 12 years. I can't tell you how many business plans I'm going to sell. Same thing with the clothing line. When you're trying to project your, your revenues and your costs, these are just what it is. It's projections. It's guesses. But if you establish early on that this whole document is credible and this whole document is factual, you're going to add more weight to your projections. So when somebody reads it, they're going to say, you know what, that makes sense. You're going to increase the likelihood of people buying your projections if your document is factual is what I'm getting to. Next, when you include statistics, especially in your company description section, you are setting the stage for yourself to be a um, be perceived as an industry expert. Now, you might just be starting this and you might just be getting into the information. That perception is going to be your foundation. If you've been doing this for 20 years, well, these statistics are going to enshrine that, you know what? Yes, I am an industry expert and here is my crew. Here is my proof. Here, here is the information to show that. But if you don't put that information in there, then nobody's going to know you're an expert or nobody's going to know that you're building towards that aspiration. So just keep that in mind. A lot of benefits of just peppering into your business plan, some statistics. All right. Next is going to be tip number two, financial projections. So the financial projections typically for a business plan is going to be your income statement, your balance sheet, both for five years, as well as 12 month profit and loss statement. In this video, I don't have enough time or, you know, I guess I could have enough time, but I'm not going to have enough time to set to get, really get into how to create a financial projections. However, what I have done is create a little handy dandy. I know I created it. Hold on a second here. Let me open it up. <coughs> what I've done is I've created... I'll, I'll just a, a basic financial model that I customize for different industries. And so for this particular basic model here, I have customized it for clothing line sales, whether it be online or in a store for this example is actually both. So the way this is structured is I got my revenues and variable costs are up here. This is going to be my revenue generation area. The next one is going to be my monthly fixed cost segment. And then finally, this is going to be my monthly profits. So once you set this up here, the way these line items work, is this line item right here what we're estimating was at, we're estimating average customer sales for the store and then average customer sales online we're not going to go into blouses and pants and accessories and and blues and reds and yellows for the colors of everything because we don't know if so, uh, customers are going to prefer you know red red pants as compared to green slacks as compared to an orange dress we have no idea what the, what they're going to do but what we can do is estimate the sales price on average of what a customer is going to drop how many customers we're going to get in the door on a daily basis or on our website and then we can also estimate what our markups are on average and so those are the the variables of this model is predicated and built upon 
All right, so like I was saying, average customer sales online and in the store. For the store, we're saying the average customers are going to be about 20 customers. Average sales price in store is going to be about 50, whereas average sales price online is going to be about 65, 10 customers here. Now, the average variable cost is going to be $25 for a $50 sale for in store. And this, the variable cost could be a little bit higher because we do have some packaging and some shipping to do for the online. So the variable cost would be about $36 here and the average sales price is about $65. Now the way we calculate the gross profit, it is as simple as deducting the variable cost from the sales price. And then once we have our gross profits, we're gonna multiply the gross profits of $25 by the number of customers. 20 times 25 is gonna give us a gross profit in store of $500, and then a gross profit of for the online stores, about $290. Next step is going to be to add them together and to multiply them about by the number of days that you're going to be operating in a week. So we're saying that we're going to be operating um, 26 days, but since we are a retail store, <coughs> we're going to say we're going to be open 30 days. So we'll just change that number right there to 30. All right. So once we multiply the days uh, by 30 by the total gross profit, gives us our monthly gross profit, $23,700. And then we're going to yank that number right down here to the monthly profits top of the line. Next is going to be our monthly fixed cost. So we're going to come up, we're going to sit down, we're going to brainstorm with what we anticipate our monthly fixed cost to be. For this example, this could be leasing, labor, utilities, marketing, supplies, accounting, legal insurance, and then the wonderful catch-all miscellaneous. We're going to estimate our cost here, add them up here, in this example, $14,400. Next step is going to take the monthly cost, plug it down here right underneath the monthly gross profits. And then finally, we're going to deduct from the gross profits $23,700 our monthly cost of $14,400 and that's going to give us a net profit in this hypothetical situation $9,300 all right so that was a mouthful and now once we have this basic financial model all ready to go now what we can do is we can go ahead and say you know what these net profits are $9,300 that's not worth getting out of bed in the morning we need to clear at least $10,000 a month to make this worth our time so what we can do is we'll go up here and say, you know what? If we bump up, we bump up our advertising um, sales. If we bump up our advertising um, cost a little bit, we might be able to get 15 customers in on our um, to get um, on average sales a day. And our marketing, you know, maybe it's going to be $2,300 to do that. So just that one change, if we bump up our marketing a little bit, add to the sales, and because of course if we're going to increase our marketing, we're going to expect our sales to increase then that's going to give us a net profit of $13,350. Now we're saying, you know what? Now that we know how many customers we need, what the average sales price are, we can go ahead and start focusing on that. All right, so what are we going to do to get 20 customers in there a day and 15 customers online? And this model is going to help us now zero in on identifying how many customers we need the service in order to reach the profits that we have. And then also, once we have this basic financial model geared, ready to go, we can go ahead and expand this into the 12 month projections as well as the next five year projections for your pro forma income statements. So it's a real powerful tool, it's easy to build, and it's a huge benefit later on when you need your pro formas done. All right, so hopefully that information was helpful. And so in summary, when you're writing up a business plan, especially for a clothing line, make sure to follow up a proven format. If you go onto the SBA website, download a generic business plan template, you're going to get exactly that, a generic business plan template that is good for the, a clothing line, it's good for a lawn care business, it's good for a construction business, it's good for a restaurant, and, and it's also good for a dog kennel business as well. But what you now need to do is figure out what information you need for your business as compared to other businesses. And it very well could take you longer to figure that out than just starting from scratch. So be careful when you're doing your form um, proven formats. You know, if you get something too generic, you're, you're going to be there while trying to, to figure, you know, figure out what's top, what's, um, what, what's up, what's down, and what's, what's left and what's right. Also, keep the start of the show as the business. You know, as I said, you know, earlier, yes, you know, when you're in your uh, company description, you do want to lead off with talking about your passion and why you want to start it, but don't make it about yourself. Don't keep going on and on and on. And by the time you're done talking about talking about yourself in the company summary, you, you're up to 15 pages and, and you haven't even hit, you know, year six of, you know, your childhood. 
So just be real careful about that. Keep the start of the show as a business. Lead off with yourself and your passion, but make sure to transition early and quickly and succinctly into the business and, and then keep the focus on the business. And then finally, if you need a little bit of help with your closing line business plan, uh, please reach out, give me a call, send me a text, send me an email. Be delighted to write the closing line business plan for you. Be delighted to do the financial projections only for you. Um, so just you know, let me know if you need some help. And then finally, if you do want to go ahead and write the business plan yourself, but you, you need a template that is geared towards the closing line industry, just check out my website at qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash designer clothing line business plan template. I do have a customized business plan template that is geared towards this industry. And if you do want some more tips and tricks on how to write a business plan for the closing line industry, again, check out my website, qualitybusinessplan.com forward slash how to write a clothing line business plan. All right, so hopefully this video was helpful. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up on YouTube. And as always, go out there, make a little bit of money and have a great day. Thank you.